or as good as I can, but I'm always working to be better, 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 better. This is working life. This is art life. But the real life, that's something else. You must be wise to think when it is enough, because sometimes enough is enough. And then you stop, and you take the consequence. It's very important that you are ready to take the consequence of your life. Very, very much. It's not my problem to decide if people are good or not. I have only to decide what I want to give to the world. And if I can give a little bit, which can maybe help other people to look little light, little stars in their life. That's what matters. If people are good and bad and whatever they are, that's not my problem. I just have to give... My last husband, he was a dream, but he was damn difficult. But he was the one I loved. And I didn't want to change him. He didn't want to change me. And I think that is one thing which can be difficult for many people. Because when people meet, they want to change each other. This is wrong. You have to accept each other as they are. And I can tell you one day my husband, um, he had sugar illness for 40 years, so he could, with the sugar, you know, he can be very nervous and so. And he's, we were sitting in the sitting room and he said to me, and I know I'm not easy. And I said, oh, I am not easy. Yeah, I know I'm not easy. And then I said to him, Christoph, I love you exactly as you are. And then he said to me, and he was in the 70s, he was 75 when he moved up here from Germany to me. Then he said, and you're the first one in my life who told me that. And I think that's beautiful. That's a fairy tale. And even he's no more here. Every day, as the other husbands I had, I love him so much, you cannot believe it. I'm so filled with them. When I look at my sons, I say, oh my God, they had such a beautiful father. I think that's the top of the life, and that is the quality of life so my life was a fairy tale and it still is really it still is and I'm so filled up with love and good things so I hope maybe a little more time to come but you don't know but we try to make every day worse living and beautiful. And as you get older, you know, try so many things so you can see what is important and what is not important. I feel that this place here where I live, it's craft center. Can you say that? It has so much power, a power center. Because people, they reach me from all over the world every day. When you live on an island, it's a full painting. And because we have the water, we have the frame around the painting, and you can see it much better. When you live in a big land and uh, you don't spot each little town and each little thing so much. 
as you do when you live on an island. This is very different to live on an island. But, but you know, when you were home in Romania, what did you do? You looked in the web camera and you could look at Lesse and you followed Lesse again and again. If it was in the middle of Jutland with all the other towns and stuff, it would be difficult to recognize. But here, you could see what we did and the weather and everything on this little place. In some ways. It's very, very simple. At least you can make it simple. Because you have no responsibility for your neighbors. You have only responsibility for your own heart. And what matters is that you in the morning clean up your own heart, decide. Even if some people hurt you a little bit and so, doesn't matter. Maybe this person have a bad day. What you want to give to this world, you take out of your own heart and you only have to Work with that. And don't think so much about the neighbors and them and them and them. Clean up here and the neighbors should do the same. And then this wonderful world will bloom, bloom, bloom. And it's small things which matters. It really is. I think I was born like this. But I don't, I don't think about that. But you know, if you smile to the life, the life will smile to you, and it does. That's a good way. But I feel very happy, so why should I not smile? Ah, it began six years ago. Um, there were a group from Romania coming here to my place to play and I loved the music very much. For the first two years they came. They came every year, 23rd of June, because I opened the gallery every year, 23rd of June. And um, they, had, they were clever. This was the first time I met people from Romania like that. So, this was the beginning in my life to start to be interested in your country. And this music made me very happy. And because of this music, I went to Romania and I went to a wedding and I met quite a few people in Romania. I have had people from Romania coming here after that time. But this music opened my heart for Romania. Adrian, he write music and I could feel that if we spent many nights talking and I had a long life, I could give to him something from my life which he might be able to use or something like that. We have spent so much time together talking about life, about everything. Then we worked very much together and he wrote some very, very good music. And then he wrote some special then we talked about paintings, because I have this, uh, I can do this, I can put colors on sounds. I have trained that for maybe 25 years. When I close my eyes and I listen to some music, the colors come into my head by itself, by the sounds. And I, I knew I could do that. So, two years ago, we decided to do, he would like, we would do something with paintings and the music he wrote. 
about the island here because he loves the island and he spent so much time here and he had the right feeling for this island and for the colors and for the softness, the silence, the silence. Because the silence here is actually making a noise. But Adrian have this and we have this together. So I knew together we could do something. I have worked this long way to get to the uh, finale. That was perfect. The black, the red, the white. The black. The sea. The mushrooms, the flowers, the water, the late nights with the red wine in front of the fire. That's everything. That's my feeling for Romania and my friends there. As short as that. Think positive and you'll be happy and then life will go much more easy. Well, I'm like my mother, I'm always in a good mood every day. We are very different, but on good ways, you can see. He's the career and people in Copenhagen and I'm a little more family over here. I come to my sister, and she said, Oh, Olaf, could you help me to take this what is it, furniture. furniture over there? Yes, yes, yeah, okay. And this furniture over there, we could take over there. And this furniture over there, we can take over there. And the day is gone. And I say, I uh, move my furniture, and she moves the no, furniture. Much. Okay? <laughs> E greu să nu fii rău în România, e greu să nu fii negru în România, e greu să nu, să nu te abați de la o cale onestă până la urmă, fără să mă ducă gândul în nu știu ce lucruri ascunse. Și e foarte greu să prinzi trenul. Și văd foarte mulți oameni care, din marea nefericire, n-au prins trenul, deși sunt extrem de talentați, extrem de... care ar avea ce să spună care avea ce să demonstreze și care avea ce să, să ne arată nou tuturor. Fără șansă nu poți să faci nimic și poate nu. Poate asta este o condiție care nu se răspunge doar pentru noi, dar România trebuie să ai două șanse. <fie> <fie> 